Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. When people see my pastel paintings and then they see the pastels that I use to create them, they often ask how I can get such detail with big blunt chunks of pigment. So today I thought I would show you all the different ways that I can get the best out of my pastels and how I can get them to create tiny details. I hope that you find this helpful. If you do, then please do subscribe here on YouTube. Also hit the little bell notification so that you'll know when I release new videos. And also consider checking me out on my Patreon channel where you'll gain access to all of my full length tutorials and lots more. But enjoy this. What I'm going to do in this video is show you a palette of colours that I'm currently using in a painting and I'm going to use these pastels to show you all the different ways that I get the huge variety of marks that I need. The first bit of advice I'll give you though is to have a range of different sizes and softness of pastels. So for example I'll make use of the bigger sticks especially when I'm doing things like blocking in but then I'll also have these smaller, harder pastels with square edges. And I'll use this type of pastel for areas around eyes, noses, just generally places where I need some very fine, definite details. And I'll also make use of pastel pencils when what you really need is that tiny, sharp point. In a way, this is like having lots of different sized paint brushes all preloaded with colour. The thing is, I love to use soft pastel a bit like paint and what I love most about the big sticks is the strength of the colours and how solidly it goes onto the paper. So when I'm painting, I won't necessarily pick up a pastel pencil when I want some detail. Instead, I will try for about 90% of the time to get all of my marks with the softer, bigger sticks. And then maybe just at the end, I'll come in with pastel pencil or blenders to tweak and refine everything into place. Because my priority is to get the strongest pigment onto the paper so that it looks really solid and vibrant. So how do I do that with these big sticks? Well, that's what I really want to show you in this video. The majority of my pastels in my collection are unison pastels, and this video will probably show you why that is. But I do have many other brands that I use, especially for certain colours. Like, for example, in this painting, I'm making use of a lot of different brands of pink, just because I love some of the other brands' selections of pink. But you'll see, in my pastel trays, that all my pastel colours are in all sorts of shapes and sizes. They tend to naturally wear down into useful shapes and I will also break them in half. So the most useful advice I can give you is to use your pastels. It seems obvious but remove their papers, break them up and the more you use them the more they'll wear down into lots of different useful shapes. They look so beautiful when they first arrive wearing their little fresh labels. But once you've used all the little edges around the top and around the bottom, then you know it's time to break a pastel. Just try to think that you'll have two pastels instead of one after you break it. I should say that this will happen differently for different pastel brands and it's one of the reasons why I love the Unisons because their soft texture and consistency makes them easier to break but most importantly they're not so soft that they crumble. For example the Sennelier pastels can be a little bit more tricky because they're much softer and they're a little bit crumbly I find. Of course their softness allows lots of that rich pigment to go on the paper but I personally find it difficult to achieve the detail that I want with these and I also find them just 
a little bit crumbly whenever I go to break them. So there's not as much control when it comes to snapping them in half and getting some lovely sharp edges to use. If you're a more painterly pastel artist, then this may not matter too much for you. But I love to create realism, which often requires at least some fine detail. So using my trusty unisons and using the full palette of colours that I'm currently working with on this giant painting. Let's show you some of the shapes that I end up with in my pastel tray. I'll explain a little bit how they got to be that shape and I'll show you exactly how you can use them to achieve lots of different types of marks. So first and most obviously we've got the full sticks. So even when a stick is in its full size like this and some of mine even still have the papers on because I just haven't had a need to take them off yet. Even the full stick itself is so useful. You can get all sorts of different marks using different parts of the pastel, different thicknesses of mark, which you can see in the painting that I'm doing at the moment is very useful for the grass in particular. But then you can also use the edges of the top of the pastel to get finer, more narrow marks. And once you take the actual paper off, like for example with some of these other green colours that I've got, then that opens you right up to use the pastel on its side. So you can colour in huge areas in no time um, and really block in a lot of area very quickly with the, the full sticks and their papers off. You can see I've still got quite a few full stick shapes within my box and many times I don't necessarily need to break them because I can use them just the way they are depending on what I'm doing. Next I've always got some half sticks lying around. Some that I've broken a while ago and you can see the edges are worn down a little bit and some that are more freshly broken and have still got lovely sharp edges around the, the middle section where it broke. So when I do feel the need to break a stick it's usually because I'm looking for these edges around the, the centre area where you break them. So I've possibly used the full stick and used all of the sharper edges around the top of it. And quite often, especially with my lighter colours, when I need to apply the top layers a little bit more refined, adding more detail with my highlights, then I'll break the stick in half. And that turns it into a half stick like this, which Again, it will wear down over time and I will lose all of the sharp edges. But you can still find pretty fine lines on a blunt pebble like this. Also, you've got the option then to get a narrower um, blocking in shape like this. Which is also very useful when you're blocking in smaller areas than your full stick will fit. But once I've freshly broken the stick, you get these lovely sharp edges around the top and that gives you a whole other world of finer marks when, for example, you're creating uh, fine areas of fur, you need to add little highlights on the top. So you can get pretty fine marks with what's still quite a big lump of pastel. And you'll see in my pastel palette here that lots of my pastels are broken into the half stick shape. That's really step one for me of wearing most of my pastels down. Next we have full length sticks but with flat edges. So if I don't end up breaking the pastel in half and what I end up with are these longer pieces of pastel with flat edges that's usually because I've used the full pastel just like I did here to do some blocking in. So I've blocked in a larger area and I've flattened this edge of the pastel. And I love when I have these pieces in my palette because they, one, they're nice to grip. You've got a good flat edge to grip it with. And two, you get all of this area all the way around the pastel that gives you uh, sharp edges. You get so much more sharp edge on a pastel that's been worn down on its side than for example a pastel that you've broken in half. You only get those that rounded edge at the top. Whereas with this you really do get a lot of uh, sharp edge where you can create 
lots and lots of finer marks. Of course, you can use the flatness of the pastel as well to create wider marks like this. But if it's those fine marks that you're struggling with the most, this shape of pastel is really great. As you've got any amount of sharp edges to use all around the pastel. And of course, once that starts to wear down and you start to lose some of the sharpness of the edges, then this pastel with the flat edge also makes a very nice shape of pastel to actually break in half. So that will be the next step for breaking down my pastels into useful shapes. And each time I break them down, I end up with a whole load of new sharp edges and a different shape of pastel to work with. So it's always a bonus. Whatever shape of pastel comes out of this is always useful to me. And this will then allow me to find even finer lines. Next we have half sticks with flat edges. So I've just been talking a little bit about breaking the full length pastels with the flat edge in half and you might get that when you break them in half or when you wear down one of these half sticks by using it on its side but either way you'll end up then with pieces like this the little half sticks but with flat edges I really love the pastels when they get a flat edge on them like I've just been talking about because you get all of this sharp edge and you get sharp corners and everything so these are very useful Blues in particular I tend to have flat edges because, for example, I've perhaps covered in a large area of sky in my painting, like the one I'm working on at the moment. And then often I'm adding little blue highlights on the dog's fur because it's got some sky reflecting on it. And that flat edge then allows me to be able to make the finest little marks and those sharp corners give me a lot of control with the pastel. So I can make right down to the tiniest of little marks just because of that lovely flat edge. Now from all of the little half stick shapes, they just continue to wear down more and more. So this one probably came from a half stick that had a flat edge and it, had, it has just continued to wear down into a smaller pebble. Other little bits of half sticks that have worn down over time into smaller and smaller pieces. So mostly coming from the half stick shapes when I've broken them in half, they will naturally end up becoming smaller pebbles like this. And every one is a different size and there's potential in every single shape for either wider marks, just like with the big pastels. You can search around for a sharper edge on this though, when you need smaller details. And each time I use the pastel, it creates another little edge. So rather than sanding your pastels, which I know sometimes I get asked if I actually sand my pastels down, but to me, that would be a giant waste of precious pigment. Instead, using my pastels is what sands them down. So each time I make marks with this, I get a new set of sharp edges. So each little piece of pastel has the potential to make big marks and small marks. Just by constantly turning the pastel around as you're using it and searching for those little edges that you need. It's a good idea to sit and play with some of your pastels. Just experiment with making all different widths and shapes of mark because you really can get every shape of mark and every breadth of mark out of the one stick. 
and eventually they will wear right down into little pebbles and shards of pastel. And I keep absolutely every tiny little piece of pastel because you never know when they're going to come in useful for that tiny little highlight. So you can see already that I don't need the tiniest little pebble of pastel to create the tiniest little marks. But quite often, over many years and a lot of use, my pastels do end up getting down to this size sometimes. And especially with the lighter colours where I want to make tiny little highlights, perhaps just that one bit of reflected highlight in an eyeball, for example. And that's where these little pebbles and shards come in very useful. Of course, I can still make a bigger mark with this small piece. But this small piece also gives me the potential to make a very controlled little dot somewhere. And rather than picking up the pastel pencil to do stuff like this, you just wouldn't get the same strength of pigment. I've got another video here on YouTube showing the difference between the strength of pigment that you get in pastel pencils and with these softer pastel sticks. And I'll always choose the pastel stick where possible, especially when making the brightest of highlights as the light colours go on so much better when you're using the pastel sticks. So again, just constantly rotating the little piece of pastel, looking for a sharp point. If that's the type of mark that you need to make something very small and precise. So I hope that you can see from this that the full range of marks that you're searching for are possible with just the pastel sticks themselves. And although when you first get started with pastel, of course, you're going to have a full set of pastels that look like these with their papers on and the full size sticks. And that's exactly why I say get busy, get using them, get breaking them up, because the quicker you can get your pastels to look more like this, the more variety of marks you'll be able to make. So you can see that every shape and size of pastel gets saved and used. And the more sizes and shapes that I have, the bigger variety of marks I can make. Even when I drop a box of pastels by accident, sometimes I can console myself with all of the useful little shards of pastel that will come in handy. It's all about changing your mindset to allow your pastels to become broken and used. Otherwise, it's a bit like trying to preserve tubes of paint and not crush them as you squeeze the paint out. So besides the shapes of the pastels themselves, there's obviously still a bit of technique involved in making the fine details from these lumps of pigment. I believe that's something that comes with time and practice getting used to gripping them, getting better at aiming that little edge just where you want to make a mark, all that becomes easier with time. And the beauty of pastel is that it's movable and workable after you apply it to the paper. Sometimes my marks will go in the wrong place and it's easy enough to cover it up and go again. Or maybe I'll go over an edge too much then it's possible to clean it up from the other side using either pencils or blenders. It's not like I put the pastel on the paper perfectly. It's more than about how I work it and refine it into place to get the desired effect. I'm totally in love with making marks with pastel sticks. I just love the variety of sizes and textures of marks you can create. It's such a tactile, hands-on medium, and I hope that this video might help you get the best out of your pastels. If nothing else, I hope that I've helped you be brave enough to snap a few in half. If you've enjoyed this here, then please do subscribe here on YouTube. Also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified when I make a new video. I've also got a Patreon channel that you might wanna check out if you're interested in more of my full-length tutorials. And if you visit my website library, here you'll be able to browse all of the content that's available to my patrons.
You'll gain access to this full library of video tutorials, as well as royalty-free reference images, and lots more help and critique within this wonderful community of artists. But thanks very much for watching here, and until next time, happy pastling.